Well, good afternoon, traders. And you know, I think last week we, we had seen some really positive signs coming through markets. I think certainly a lot of people who are long, on the long side of US Treasuries, long side of rates, uh, were caught off pretty badly. And we've seen a lot of people having to cover those positions. And, and, and the news flow was, 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 was really clearly positive in that situation and, and really warranted that move. Whether you're looking at the ECB giving off the impression that perhaps they're done on the rate cutting cycle, there was obviously a big fracturing and, and warring between the, the governing council as to whether they should be looking to, one, cut the deposit rate into that deeper negative territory, but also so what they were going to do with quantitative easing, uh, obviously they've come out with 20 billion euro package that is going on for as long as it effectively takes, which could be for a long time. Um, but yeah, there was certainly an element of doubt and, and, and a lot of fragmentation with the European Central Bank. We've obviously seen um, a convergence between the US and China, and that was something that was very much in play. The idea that you could see a, a temporary um, relief uh, and, and trade trees coming through, perhaps even something more than maybe even to the, t the point of you seeing an interim trade deal. Um, China coming out and, and taking off a number of US, US agricultural products from that 25% tariff leaf, li uh, list, and also looking to, to commit to, to buy a, a, an undisclosed amount of US agricultural, pro agricultural products like soybeans, for example. And certainly, you know, 34 basis points on, on tens to the upside was a, was a staggering move. You, for statistics, statistics, statisticians out there, that's a three and a half sigma move on the week. Now, in terms of rate of change, we worked that out to be the, the highest in, since November 2016. So clearly, that's had some big moves. That had a big move on, on dollar, dollar yen and something we'll be watching this week as well. And also, you know, people very much focused on what's happening in Brexit. The idea that potentially Boris Johnson could be looking to forge some sort of deal with the European Union after or, or before the EU summit on October the 18th, something that we are watching out. Sterling yen was the best performer in G10, but today, is a new day and, and very much focused on what's happening in the energy complex. We had obviously seen the news flow. I think most people have been watching what was happening there. This was a huge event and probably the most disruptive event to the oil market that we've ever seen in terms of most oil analysts' uh, minds. Now, the idea that you've got the, the Abkirk uh, production facility in, in the Saudi Arabian region and effectively being, being attacked by what was initially claimed to be drones, that, has, that, that, that idea has been sort of put to test. But, uh, you know, five million barrels a day being a potential disruption there is, is something that is not to be sneezed at. And, of course, that feeds into the supply-demand dynamic. Obviously, we're going to see a drawdown in Saudi in terms of Saudi's inventory numbers there. But uh, you know, I think there's a few question marks about what this actually means for the for a potential reversal and a rise up in, in Middle Eastern tensions, one between Saudi Arabia and Iran, but also what happens now with Donald Trump and how did the U.S. come into this situation, if at all? At the moment, people are saying this is a war of words, but Donald Trump has said he probably knows who's behind this and he is locked and loaded. You know, certainly not comments that we really want to be seeing, of course, unless you're long of crude, which you can see the price had a nice spike. On open. Now, we, we, we kind of knew that the oil prices were going to move up sharply on open, but what we hadn't anticipated, we see Brent prices trading just shy of 72 bucks, up 19% on the day. That was the biggest one day appreciation in crude that we've ever seen. WTI prices moving up into sort of the high $64 or into, into 64 bucks, up 15%. That was a huge move, but we have seen sellers really coming in. Obviously, the question marks around this situation is, does this war of words lead to a complete fragmentation and a higher chance of military conflict? That's something for everyone to decide. Uh, but certainly the idea that, that we are in a raised situation where we could see uh, further attacks on these on these production facilities is something that, that's very much in play. What happens to that drawdown in inventory? So there's a lot of question markets are answering, but the fact is is that if you have a look at prices now, you can see Brent prices 66.57, that's six, up six bucks on the day. Uh, WTI 59.97 up five bucks. They have come nicely off the highs. So traders have used that strength to sell into. Perhaps they could see this dying down in a little bit. Gold prices at uh, 15.04. They have been higher on the day, quite sharply higher than this. But again, people are looking to sell into that move. How is that moving in 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 this uh, in the oil complex traded through the currency markets? Well, if you have a look at dollar CAD, that's down 54 points, 132.34. Dollar Noki having a big move to the downside, uh, down about 0.7.8 for percent, down 51 points there. You know, you can see also that the Turkish lira under a little bit of pressure. We're seeing, um, you know, some sellers coming through in the Turkish lira, and you're also seeing sellers uh, in 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 some of the other sort of high risk currencies as well. You can see Aussie Aussie dollar down about 10 points or so, not too much. But dollar yen, that sort of gap lower, trading into 107.50, had a, had a bit of a strong rally up to 107.92. We're back down to this 107 sort of uh, 50 level now as we as we speak. We're coming down further down. 
Um, and I think that's going to be something we are watching. There does seem to be some support into that 107.50 level playing through. In terms of equities, well, it's not going to surprise anyone whatsoever to see that we are seeing such buying coming through in the energy sector. ASX energy stocks up 4.2% 4, 4 as a sector. It's one of the biggest gains we've seen for a long, long time. Uh, we're seeing material stocks up 1.2%. Uh, we are seeing a bit of a bid coming through in some of the more defensive structures of the market, such as the staples. I think that's working out quite well. Uh, financials taking a few points out of the markets today. And again, you know, that, that sort of weakness we're seeing in, in those sectors will probably play through into the European Open. Our calls for Germany down 135 at the point moment, uh, UK down 40, what, 42 points. And what we've also seen uh, in terms of, um, you know, the, what's happening in Wall Street is, you know, there's clearly sellers playing through. People looking at this Middle Eastern situation and saying, is this the start of something um, more protracted uh, and of course much wearing a, a much higher risk premium towards the Middle East or is this something that will, will, will die down in line with what we saw last week where we saw some of the tensions really bickering down and the idea that we could see some of the sanctions lifted off Iran so will we return back to that situation I don't know if we will I think the fact that we, we're seeing such positive such big gains coming through in the oil complex today suggests this is a story that we need to keep, keep our eye on.